All right. Hey, what's up, everybody? We're back. It's another road reflection coming at you. Doing these a couple times a week. Uh, trying to keep up as much content on this channel as possible. We've got some youths on the street today. I <laughs> uh, hope everybody's doing well. hope everybody's doing all right. Uh, I've... Uh, uh, we'll just, we'll start with a check-in, doing doing the thing that I need to be doing, which is to keep a spare cloth mask in the car, uh, just in case I ever forget the to have uh, <laughs> my shit. Uh, if you watched yesterday, you know that I locked myself out of my house with my keys and wallet and all that other stuff, and I felt like a total asshole, uh, totally frazzled and. Kind of a tough evening, uh, but I was able to relax, you know, after the side gig. I got home, chilled out with the with with, with some peeps, with the housemates and stuff. So uh, doing a lot better today, even though it's a, it's a lot cloudier of a day today uh, here in the old Pitts, Pittsburgh area. A uh, little bit of a cloudy day. Um, it's still warm out, too. Like, that's... The crazy part, which is which is kind of nice, because I I do want to like take a walk and stuff like that. Um, I like doing that. I like going for walks, doing a, doing doing some cardio before the lifting. I've gotten back into exercising this week, so that's all good, positive stuff going on. Um, I did Rumple Cone show today. If you haven't, if you have didn't get the opportunity to catch that live, uh, that is on Ron's channel. I think I've, 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 throughout this pandemic, I've done his show like almost once a month. Uh, I've done it. I've done it quite a bit. Uh, and and Ron was super nice because uh, I think he has covered the. So today, like the thing that we ended up talking about was uh, what happened with my YouTube channel um, again. Uh, you know because uh, there was a copyright claim because I have two different emails between my YouTube channel. And my CD baby, where my albums get distributed from. So there's two different emails. So YouTube thought that I was stealing uh, material from myself, uh, which makes no sense. And of course, YouTube doesn't really have like a person that you can go and talk to. Um, so I had to do everything through CD Baby's end and explain to them what was going on. And they had to go through their channels and took a little bit, but, you know, it, it basically took longer than it needed to because YouTube doesn't have somebody. So we, we kind of talked about that whole um, whole ordeal on top of a bunch of municipal broadband stories and various other things, including including kitty talk. We had some cat talk because uh, <laughs> Rod's, Rod's a cat guy, and now I'm, I'm also apparently a cat guy. Uh, I got my little cat at home. Uh, and he's doing great, by the way. He's uh, doing really fucking well. A um, lot, of, lot of running around in the mornings and the afternoons. Uh, we play a little game of chase every once in a while. A little game of be batting the mouse and hunt. Like he plays a little hunt game with the with his little mouse toy. It's good. It's fun. He's 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 getting back to normal. Actually, better than normal because. Uh, when he had his little cloudy eye, he wasn't very playful. He would he would try to play, but I think the eye just bugged him too much to do uh, a whole lot of anything. But now he's like a lot more playful and stuff like that, so it's good. He's 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 uh, he's becoming a regular cat again. He's still weird as fuck, but he's at least a regular nice old cat. Uh, but I'm you know re relatively in a good mood, relatively in good spirits. Hopefully that'll continue. And this drive doesn't change any of that. Um, good spirits in terms of like personal life stuff. Good spirits, you know. The, the the world is still on fire, you guys. The world is still on fire. Uh, so I have not forgotten about that. Uh, but I have uh, three fun stories for you guys today. Three things to to kind of chat about, discuss, uh, a few thoughts and ideas. Um, uh, yeah, things that you're not gonna hear on any sort of mainstream network. So so make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you like this channel. Uh, like the video. Subscribe to the channel on whatever platform you're watching this on, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Rockfin, whether it's Facebook, 
uh, or the audio version of it, if that's if that is the the way you digest the content that uh, that I put out there. Uh, make sure you're subscribed. Uh, make sure you share and get the word out about uh, the the topics that we are we are uh, discussing here today. So, uh, at the top of the uh, the show, I do want to discuss the possibility of. A general strike. We, we might be seeing some uh, additional general strike actions taking place. There was some big general strike actions that were um, that were organized around May Day. Uh, we, we saw a record number of strikes over the summer this year. Uh, there's a, a website called Payday Report. Payday Report. Highly recommend that website. It's a very good website. And... Uh, they talk about strikes, and there's been a ton of strikes this year. A ton of wildcat strikes, a ton of organized strikes. And uh, right now, there's a bunch of unions organizing um, organizing a general strike surrounding uh, the election. Primarily, what they're saying is if Trump refuses... Well, at first, they were saying if Trump meddles with the election in any way, there will be a general strike to prevent him from doing that. Uh, to push back against, you know, his uh, chicanery. Um, but now it's whether or not he's going to leave. That's that's the big question mark that we're all facing here is, is Trump going to fucking leave the White House uh, without creating, you know, a, a, a large amount of, of, of issues here, which is doubtful. I don't know. I don't. I don't think he's going to leave on on quiet terms. You know, that's just not how the dude does stuff. Uh, dude likes to be fucking loud and boisterous about his shit, and uh, and I think he's going to continue to be loud and boisterous about his shit. That's just what he does. That's just how he operates. Uh, so I mean, he's already emboldened his people to believe that uh, there was some fraud with the mail-in ballots, which is. Hilarious because the Republicans are the ones that, in a general election, uh, are mo- more likely to uh, cause election fraud. That's just what happens all the time, right? And so there's a chance that he might not leave because he doesn't believe that he lost the election. Um, so, you know, is that true? I'm... I'm He's going to go to the courts to do that. That's going to be the last three months of his thing. Like, he's not going to leave on a note that's really going to piss off neoliberals. He's going to leave off on a note that's just going to piss off the people that are already pissed off that he is a person that exists. Uh, So, you know, it sucks. But I'm glad to see that the unions are going to hold his feet to the fire. Uh, they're going to use the power of the general strike to call attention to uh, things like election fraud. And what I would hope would happen going forward is that the unions can use the power of their of, of the general strike of, of strikes in in, uh, in general uh, against even Democrats who. Um, who, who push back against pro- progressives and uh, you know that's that's how they commit election fraud and uh, I wish that the that the unions would have done that uh, but we have we have some in Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania at least we have uh, seven unions three local AFL CIO chapters and over 600,000 workers saying that they will engage <laughs> engage in a general strike if Donald Trump doesn't leave the office. On top of that, Vermont's AFL-CIO is organizing an actual general strike on November 21st if, uh, if he has not, you know, bowed down and, and begun the uh, peaceful transition of power uh, to, to the other racist grandpa uh, that is going to be taking over the White House. Following that, we have the Seattle Education Association. They're convening to meet and talk about what the next steps are in this situation, right? And, and I hope the next steps are to uh, push back against people like 
Joe Biden, who has said no to Medicare for all. And uh, I think the next step should be that we should have a general strike regardless, that there should be a general strike regardless of whether Donald Trump is leaving the office or not, because Joe Biden um, has refused to recognize what the people of this country actually want. Uh, denying Medicare for all, uh, not banning fracking, uh, no Green New Deal, um, you know, uh, no immigration reform, um, no Medicare for all. Did I did say that. I feel like I said that before already. No UBI. And these are just some of the things that no defunding the police. He actually wants to give the police more money, right? And we're going to talk about that in a bit. Um, so we should have a general strike against that. We should just have a general strike against anybody that is not going to listen to the voice of the people. And Joe Biden is one of them. So is Kamala Harris. She's also uh, not really listening to the voice of the people. They're, the whole administration is. That, so really the general strike should be for systemic change, for systemic reforms. That's what the general strike should really be about. And once again, we see the labor movement, the unions really lead the charge to drive some change. Uh, Governments aren't doing it, so we the people need to do it. And where do we affect them? We affect them at the workplace because that is where um, they can leverage their power, but that's also where we can leverage our power in order to um, in order to get what we want, in order to get not just what we want, but what we need as a as a populace. So we saw this back in August, where the American Federation of Teachers, the AFT, came up with with an SOP, a standard operating procedure for what needs to happen, and and all of the precautions that need to be taken in place in order to reopen schools again. The CDC didn't put that in, and that should have been the CDC's job. You know, that should have been the fucking CDC's job. So... You had all this. You, you 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 had all of the opportunities for government bodies, government agencies to do what they were supposed to do to help the people during a pandemic, and they fucking didn't. And then it became the unions' jobs to do it, the people's job to do it, uh, right? So 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 that's that means that we need systemic overhaul. So if we really want to see a free and fair election, if we want to see that at all, if we want to see real electoral reform, real electoral uh, uh, election transparency on all levels, from the primaries onwards, then it looks like it's going to be the unions that are going to, they, that's going to be able to do it, right? The strikes, protests, that sort of stuff. That's who's really going to be able to, to push for something like that. Capitalism... Capitalism doesn't really want a democracy. It doesn't want to uphold it. Because it's bad for capitalism. It wants to purchase democracy so that it can use it as a product. So people will believe in capitalism. But what capitalism really wants is uh, authoritarianism um, to... uh, to get people to do what capitalism wants, which is uh, be in debt, have a couple people up at the top that own everything. Oh, this is the worst spot to be in. I don't even know if you can tell, but my eyes are completely covered by the sun. Uh, But it it wants people to be in debt. It wants people to constantly spend uh, more consumerism, more debt, more wars. That's what capitalism wants. And it uses democracy as a vehicle to control people, to you know, basically push them to believe in that sort of stuff. 
So what, what, you know, that's why the people are going to call for a general strike. If you want systemic change like that, if, if there's a massive general strike in this country, and think about it, if nobody shows up to work at a bunch of these fucking places and the whole country shuts down and then we work together um, through labor organization, through mutual aid and start taking care of our communities that way, what are they going to do? Well, history would suggest that they would call the military in and call, you know, basically today they would call it an act of terror. What, you know, communities taking care of each other is an act of terror and they'll send in the National Guard uh, and try to break it up. That's what they did in the past. That's what they did in the past. But if that is something that happened, I mean, and, and, and the demand is that we want uh, electoral transparency and reform on all levels, which means that, you know, all the stolen votes and all of the exit polls that were uh, showing that, you know, uh, there was uh, election fraud done by the Democrats against Bernie Sanders, uh, and somebody needs to answer for that sort of shit, then I bet you that's what will happen. And speaking of the Democrats, the Democrats are not really going to do anything against uh, Trump, ele- uh, Trump election fraud because it exposes them and the election fraud that they've committed in the primaries. So they're not really going to do anything. It's the same thing of like, why didn't, why didn't the Democrats go after Trump for the emoluments clause? Well, because they're fucking guilty of it too. So why would they just incriminate themselves? That's why they're not going. That's why they have to come up with other bogus reasons uh, like this whole story about, oh, democracy, we're upholding this and we're upholding that. And voting, it's the most powerful thing. It's, you know, there's a quote I, I remember reading where they said if voting was really as powerful as people think it is, it would have made it illegal. Voting's good, and I think you should do it to get your voice heard. Uh, but in this country, based on the way that electoral politics works, it it has a lot less power than what people think it does. Especially when voting is compromise. And that's the right thing to do. Or that's pitched as the right thing to do when it's really not. How did, how did the labor movement really get the things that it wanted to get? Well, they marched in the streets. They... Oh, I don't know if you can hear that at all. But, boy, that truck is having a rough go through, this, through the tunnel. Uh, but how did they get it done? Well, strikes. They held massive strikes. City by city held general strikes. Uh, in 1934, that was like the year of general strikes. There were just general strikes happening all across the country. Um, I did do a forkful of noodles about it. I did did several videos about general strikes, how to make that shit happen, and and, um, why it's effective. Uh, Well, in 1934, there were much of general strikes. A lot of them were very effective. A lot of them were more effective than others. Um, And then at the end of that, you had FDR, one of FDR's uh, uh, cabinet members, basically come out and say that the striking workers were treason, which made... uh, FDR, this very liberal, progressive, socialist, democratic candidate, uh, basically made his administration look like Republican authoritarian authoritarians. Um, now, FDR's party is responsible for working class socialists to be put into prison because Woodrow Wilson was a Democrat that put the Espionage and Sedition Act into place. So his party kind of, kind of has a pattern of doing this. That's sort of a thing that they do, sort of a thing that they like. Uh, But he needed votes. He needed to get elected back into office. So the best and easiest way to do that is uh, by listening to the voices of people, stop using the military against them, um, and pass a piece of legislation called the Wagner Act that gave unions more power. Using the voice of labor. Using the voice of the, of the, the power of the working class, the power of what's in the workplace, um, to drive change. It wasn't, you know, that, that's not legislation coming first. That's not voting coming first. That is uh, on the ground activism. That is on the ground shutting shit down, uh, pulling our resources together, supporting each other in solidarity, 
um, believing in mutual aid, and that's the other thing that, that how did these how did the striking workers survive? Mutual aid. Farmers came to help um, striking workers in uh, Minneapolis, and they were like, "Here's food. We're donating a bunch of food to the cause." When they did it in Seattle, 1919, there they set up different parts of the city that fed over 30,000 people. took care of uh, delivering bread and milk to people's houses and oil to hospitals. Mutual aid, solidarity. That's how it's going to be done. So I'm hoping that the power of labor can can start shedding a light on, on true systemic corruption, on election fraud and, uh, and the need for election transparency, on basically every single level that need that that we need to see it on. And if that happens and if this information is exposed and it becomes widely and more publicly available, you know, it there 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 is less excuse for uh people to continue supporting uh you know, breadcrumb candidates like Joe Biden that are microscopically better than Donald Trump. All right, let's move to uh, the next story. This is a little bit of an old story, but I think it's important to cover, and uh, I haven't had the opportunity to talk about it. Um, But uh, the DA in Louisville, Daniel Cameron, uh, not very liked because he wants to keep the... the, the, uh, what the grand jury discussed in uh, in private. He wants to keep that anonymous. He doesn't want to really talk about what happened with the grand jury after the Breonna Taylor uh, indictments and the sentencing, where only one cop was sentenced and wasn't even sentenced for murder, was sentenced for wanton endangerment uh, because he accidentally fired at a different wall. Not even for shooting into the home of an innocent woman. An innocent black woman, and she was killed because the police fucked up. In other jobs, man, I... So, I worked in a lot of graphic design departments, right? That's what I went to school for. Uh, I'd, I'd still do that kind of work. And if I was to monumentally screw something up, um, where someone's life was possibly in danger because of misinformation and this, that, and the third. If I was to do something that monumentally fucked up, uh, yeah, I'm going to be fired and I will probably never work in graphic design ever again. And you can substitute graphic design for virtually any other fucking job. If you're a teacher and you monumentally fuck up or one of your kids' lives are in danger... I'm pretty sure that ends your career as a teacher. Doctor, nurse, your career is in danger. It's only cops when they endanger people's lives and they kill innocent people that they are awarded or given uh, sweetheart deals to keep up this illusion that the cops are here to protect and serve. Now, the cops have always been, historically speaking, there to protect the stuff of rich people. And when you get in the way of that, they will fucking kill you. And you have people like Daniel Cameron, who's another black guy, uh, as part of the DA's office, um, basically saying, yeah, that's fine. They made some case about oh the boyfriend was, the boyfriend was uh, shooting at, at the cops. Yeah, he shot at them because he thought somebody was breaking into their fucking house because you use a no knock warrant, you dipshit. Imagine if you will, you're dead asleep in the middle of the night, and then all of a sudden, three random dudes just bust into your house and start opening fire. When you try to come down to see who's there. Fuck. 
first of all, why is this even a tactic that's used by the police? And then when you accidentally kill an innocent person, you don't go, yeah, that's a major oversight in our department and we need major fucking reforms because we fucked up monumentally. We're going to fire these officers. We're going to fire the people that, you know, were responsible for approving this thing. And we're going to figure out what went wrong and go after the right people. And how is the next piece of that conversation not, well, it seems like your department's overfunded only to fuck up and kill innocent people. There is a whole movement calling for police transparency and Daniel Cameron, black DA in Louisville, is basically like, nah, fuck y'all. Uh, there's an activist by the name of Tamika Mallory who basically compared uh, Daniel Cameron to the black people that used to sell slaves to white people. Because he is uh, letting the black community of Louisville down that fucking much. That, that this lady is like, yeah, that's what, you, that's what you sound like. You sound like a black person selling your people... Uh, into slavery and Uncle Tom. That's, I mean, that's heavy, right? Like, how do you listen to that? How do you listen to the pleas of, of the black community in, in Louisville, Breonna Taylor's family, all the people that are protesting out in the streets... How do you how do you look at all of that and still go, nah, fuck everybody. The establishment is what the establishment is, and we gonna do what we gonna do, and uh, uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna you know give these people these small minor sentences for for illegally murdering somebody. By the way, murder is legal if you have a badge. And there are people with big fucking law degrees that'll defend you. What? The big thing here is, uh, if if you're if you're stating that this decision that you came to, to charge one officer out of three. On wanton endangerment, a lesser charge than what uh, all three of these officers need to get. The, all three of these officers need to be charged with murder because that's what they did. Same thing with uh, the murder of George Floyd. He should not be getting some bullshit fucking lower charge. Uh, he should be getting a murder charge. Um, if you are the DA in Louisville and you're saying what the grand jury did was the right thing and we upheld law and order, uh, then prove it. Prove it. Prove that you did that. You can. The fact that you're keeping it anonymous is because you know that what happened behind those closed doors was go up against a movement and the voice of the people and if that information gets out there, then yeah, there will be some kind of revolt. There will be some kind of pushback. Because people are going to be pissed. And you can't accept that. So what do you do? You say, well, this is going to remain anonymous and trust us. That's so much of what the American government wants, right? That's so much of where their power comes from is just you trusting them. Just you putting faith and belief in them. That's where a lot of that power really comes from. When in reality, you can't. Okay, I'll trust you, but show us what happened. If we're supposed to trust you, then why, when the when the sentence came out, immediately there was a curfew, 
and there was uh, the National Guard got, gets called into place before any of the protests began. Is it because you know what you did was fucked up and you did the wrong thing? You went against the people? You did something that wasn't just? And you know that's going to piss off the people? And the people have every fucking right to be mad. Why is it that when you see these protests out there, and these people sit there that are against these protests, will sit there and yell and scream and say, why are they out on the streets? They're disrespecting this and they're disrespecting, they're disrespecting the police by protesting them and calling to defund them and this, that, and the third. It's a dangerous job. You know, they're... Oh, they're all just rioters. They're disrespectful rioters. Look, they shouldn't be getting angry. Why why are they not saying, you know, it's a disrespect to human life when police officers pull out their gun and shoot innocent people? Where's that fucking rationale? That's the most disrespectful thing you can do is to extinguish life for absolutely nothing. There's a fundamental misunderstanding of what the defund the police movement is all about. It's basically talking about, like, redefining what law enforcement is, because I think law enforcement in this country was developed out of a bias, uh, a very anti-black bias, anti-brown and black bias, an anti-worker bias. Uh, It was pro-oligarchs, pro-rich people to protect their shit. And by the way, uh, cops coming out of slave patrols, you have to remember that to the plantation owners, to the proponents of slavery, to the rich white people that owned land in this country, um, slaves weren't people. They were property. They were stuff. So it's always been about protecting the things of rich people. So it's fundamentally changing that. It's fundamentally becoming more about, yes, law and order, right? But what does that mean? Yeah, if there's a homicide or some kind of violent situation, you should call the cops. You should call somebody that's trained to deal with violent situations. Training police to think that all situations are going to be violent situations leads to innocent people getting killed, leads to people getting gunned down in the streets. And reallocate that money into um, into free ambulance rides when there's an emergency for when people need an ambulance, for mental health services, for domestic services, for counseling services, for better community-based initiatives, better police oversight committees. All of those things you compartmentalize the job of what a police officer and a, 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 a person in law enforcement does. You shouldn't have a guy with a gun conducting traffic, monitoring, uh, you know, um, speed limits, noise complaints. That's, why do you need someone with a gun to do that? This DA is, uh, you know, perpetuating all of those things. And he is contributing to demonizing an entire movement that's calling for transparency, that is calling for uh, restructuring the law enforcement agencies. So that we see less, you know, dead, innocent people of color on the streets that's really what it's about this is just this is just a guilty system proving that it's fucking guilty that's really what it's all about that's really all this has been proving Uh, while we're on the subject of uh, 
police brutality, uh, this is one of those things that um, the right really claimed that Joe Biden was going to do. Oh, he's going to defund the police. 911 is going to be done. There's going to be no more cops on the streets. Everybody's just going to be, uh, there's going to be people robbing each other and there's going to be people raping each other in the streets. Everybody's just going to be jacking off in the corner of every street. Just spunk everywhere. There's going to be spunk covering up plants and fucking front doors. You, 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 can't, you can't walk anywhere without, without you know, stepping in, in, in somebody's spunk. That's, that's, what, that's what's coming for in socialists to fund the police of Joe Biden America. More, more spunkies. Uh, Joe Biden is not going to defund the police. He's already came out and said that he's not going to. He doesn't believe in it. And Joe Biden a, a, constantly keeps calling all of the protests against defunding the police uh, riots, ignoring the fact that the cops are the ones that get violent first, or they infiltrate these things, or they uh, they find these outsiders to instigate the protesters. Which is again just like. They're like, yeah, I know the cops are, like, throwing tear gas and chemical weapons and rubber bullets, but why do, like, the protesters have to throw, like, bottled water? Can't they be above that? And it's just like, how much fucking patience do you really want fucking protesters that are already on edge? How much patience do you want them to have? How about you fucking call the cops and not use chemical weapons against their own fucking citizens? How about you you talk about the cops not proving the point of what the, what the protesters are protesting? Uh, cops under Joe Biden are just going to get more protection. This is the author of the crime bill, somebody that hasn't apologized for the crime bill, somebody that doesn't believe that the crime bill is as bad as it, as it is and has had negative consequences on society as it has, someone that's still proud of it, someone that has incarcerated uh, innocent and nonviolent black people in America. Joe Biden is going to... There's going to be more protections for the cops. And how is there going to be more protection for the cops? Because there's going to be more money allocated to the cops. What Biden wants to do is give the cop police departments more money for more sensitivity training. Yes! What is more sensitive than a man with a loaded gun, a taser, a baton, bulletproof vest, and a god complex? Oh man, that is that is just the makings of sensitivity right there, you guys. Nothing says sensitive like you know someone that's armed to the teeth, someone that's ready to go to war. That's like the most sensitive person out there. There's going to be way less transparency with with the Joe Biden administration for cops, right? Like. Uh, cops are cop. You're, you're gonna hide more shit. It's gonna be harder to get body cam footage. And even if the body cam footage does prove that these police officers did uh, kill innocent people or get more violent and brutal towards innocent civilians, a Joe Biden administration is not going to do anything about it. Because they still have qualified immunity under the Joe Biden administration. Biden's not going to get rid of that. The Supreme Court is mostly conservatives. Biden himself is a conservative. He's not going to get rid of qualified immunity. There's no fucking way. So under a Biden administration... Uh, you're going to have a more corrupt, uh, with proof, corrupt uh, law enforcement. Uh, part of that, too, is I, I think Biden's going to ignore what came out in the blue leaks, which shows that there are uh, connections to, to white supremacists and law enforcement. Uh, white, white supremacy groups get a major pass when it comes to law enforcement. Um, or they propagandize and they say, like, the Boogaloo Boys are connected to the Black Lives Matter movement when they're not. 
uh, you know, the Biden administration will, will kind of uh, look at them in that regard. And if Biden really wants to sit there and claim that, you know, he is against white supremacy, then he needs to address that within uh, law enforcement. Uh, he needs to ad- address the connection of uh, white supremacy and law enforcement. He needs to look at what's in the blue leaks. First of all, he needs to read the fucking blue leaks, which I doubt that he will, right? Uh, and uh, and then he needs to like do something about it, which I don't think he will. So you're still going to have white supremacy. It's just going to be veiled within the thin blue line. So I don't think police and law enforcement and police brutality is going to get any better. You know, we're, we might have some local initiatives like we did in Minneapolis over the summer um, where the city councils will work with protesters to defund the police and talk about uh, how to um, reinvest in communities, reinvest in communities of color, uh, talk about mental health. Talk about education. Talk about health care. Um, rather than demonize and punish and attack. Uh, rather than going to war with the public. Uh, you know, so... Uh, I, I think on a city level we'll have some opportunities. But other than that, I think Joe Biden is going to be uh, just as much of a disaster when it comes to... Uh, Black Lives Matter protests as Trump was and we're fundamentally going to see no change um, that's that's what I think is probably going to come down the pike and honestly I don't, I don't think he's going to say much about cops at all uh, because I, I think if he's smart he will completely stay silent on the criminal justice issue that's what I think he'll he'll primarily do if he's smart if he's smart about it um, so But hey, remember, he's keeping his promise. Fundamentally, nothing will change. And fundamentally, nothing will under Biden. But, like I said, on a city level, we can push the city council to work with activists to build a better infrastructure. And if if enough cities start doing that kind of stuff, it will become unignorable. And it will become far more difficult for someone like Joe Biden uh, to uh, not you know, atone for his, for his shitty criminal justice record and do something major on a federal legislative level. Um, you know, so we'll see, keep, keep the pressure on. Um, but you know, work, work on the ground level. That's, that's what I'm going to support. Uh, anyway, uh, I think we're going to bring this video to a close. Thank you so much for, for listening, checking it out, uh, hanging out with me while I, while I drive around the city and stuff. Uh, make sure you are subscribed, make sure you like, make sure you share this if you think what we're talking about uh, in these, in these uh, videos is important. Uh, my channel is extremely suppressed, as are many other content creators, so make sure you are uh, supporting your independent progressive uh, media. Uh, you can find everything I do at krishmohanhaha.com, K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, become a sustaining member, make monthly contributions, make a one-time donation. You can subscribe to my email list so you make sure you don't miss any of the videos or podcasts that I put out there. Um, and uh, you can catch up with all of my videos there as well. Download my stand-up comedy albums and check out when I'm doing uh, virtual shows until this pandemic is over. Uh, so that's the that's the place to do it, krishmohanhaha.com. But till till the next video, thank you for tuning in. And we'll see you on the road. Bye.